All right, open up for questions for coach. Hi, M.A., just to start on Rob and, and Marcus and how they're doing. Um, both feeling better. Marcus is still has some swelling and, and pain, soreness. Uh, they will test it out pregame and see how they feel. So no decision yet? No. And just a thought on this game five and, and trying to get get your team to come out from the jump and, and, and get a good effort to start out in the first quarter and get going from there. Yeah, that's been kind of the theme of the series. Uh, teams playing from behind. Uh, Teams coming off losses, playing with more aggression, and uh, we want to obviously reverse that and come out with some urgency ourselves, understanding we're on the road and want some carryover from a previous game. Hey, Amy. Um, at this point, both teams obviously have a lot of bumps and bruises or something worse. But just in terms of the attrition on both sides, have you seen another playoff series like this where just you guys are going down almost nightly? I mean, um, at this time of year, injuries aren't uncommon, but um, the amount of guys, are, I guess, on the questionable list from game to game, it's kind of alarming. But um, we've been dealing with it, especially with, with the Rob situation for a while. And like I said, he's pretty much day to day the rest of the playoffs. So something we have to manage and kind of work around. Um, they're going through their own thing and got a, got a, quite a few guys banged up as well. And so, um, you know, sometimes luck plays into it and and health is a big part of that. And so uh, we have to make do with what we have. Both teams have done that and won with uh, players out as we have throughout the playoffs. You made the, the third quarter of, of game one, the first quarter of game three, both times you said that their physicality, their intensity caught your guys off guard. Why are you so confident that will not happen again tonight? Well, understanding what they did uh, to take us out of our rhythm. Um, you know, it's, it can't be a back and forth thing where we defend at a high level and all of a sudden they up their physicality, they put their head down and then they, you know, kind of change the traje trajectory of the game. And so um, we understand what they've done to hurt us in those two quarters specifically in those games. And it's, it's you know, like I said, nothing schematic that they're doing. It's, it's upping their intensity, playing with more urgency. And we did the same when we've been down. So um, our guys understand that we've been pretty open about it and how to combat that and, you know, have to come out with the right mindset coming off a win uh, that we did coming off those losses. Coach, um, after game three, there was this sentiment of uh, it took Bam's performance uh, personally and looking at, at tape, what stood out to you about how you guys were able to be so effective against him in game four? Yeah, we just, I mean, took pride in that matchup and, and he, he made some tough baskets on some of our best defenders, but at the same time, his aggressiveness uh, was noticeable and we kind of were back on our heels, uh, you know, not understanding the way he was going to come out. And so uh, we just defended better overall, um, met him higher on the court um, and then understood how aggressive he came out previous game and want, how we wanted to combat that. And so for our guys, it's, it's kind of what we base ourselves on our defense on is individual one-on-one -on -one matchups, um, not having to help as much. And I think we obviously did, did a much better job of focusing on him coming in uh, with the way he hurt us in game three. In, a, in game three, when Lowry came back, they were able to really go back to their defense where, like, their lower, their smaller guys are down on the back line. They can send more pressure up. Game four, you get Rob back, and you're able to take advantage of that vertical space. How, I guess, how, how does that work in your favor, and how do you anticipate that kind of adjustment cat and mouse game playing out? Yeah, it's both ways. I think we talked about the spacing uh, that we have with when without Rob. Um, the, you know, five offensive rebounds stand out. The lob threat stands out. Um, and we missed him quite, a, quite honestly on three or four uh, right around the basket. And so um, just his presence out there, uh, what he brings to us offensively and how they react to him is different, no doubt about that. But at the same time, when we do go with uh, Grant and Al, we space the court differently as well and it can hurt him that way. But um, Rob's presence is huge. Uh, they do, we do move our guys around a little bit more when he's on the court and then do some different things, but they're going to load up regardless of, of who's in what position, they're a big time help team. And our thing is take care of the ball, not play in the crowd and, and kind of picking the gym apart. And it, the thing that stood out to me and the staff is when we're looking at the numbers specifically, it's, you know, 39 turnovers in the two losses, 18 and the two wins. And so uh, those things stand out and just not playing the crowd, making the easy pass and seeing all our outlets. And we showed that on tape. I see it game to game. And when we do it well, we win. If not, we're in, we're in trouble. 
Hey, mate. Uh, yeah, you lived in you lived and played in San Antonio, um, so I'm sure you might be familiar with, with the incident yesterday with the city. What kind of conversation do you have with your son about that? And how, I mean, how do you grapple with that as a, as a father? Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. And being in San Antonio for all those years, Uvalde is very close. I mean, you know, you see the signs all the time. It's a, about a 60 to 75 minute drive away. And so, um, you know, tragic situation, obviously, uh, for that community, for our country in general. But, yeah, this first thing you think about as a father, 10 year old, fourth, fourth grader, and, you know, the, getting those calls or, or that frantic news and, and just unimaginable, honestly, to, to find yourself in that situation as a parent that you're thinking of it. And your heart goes out to the whole community, the, the country in general and the school, but um, you know, it, it seems like these things continue to happen and not much of a wake up call and nothing really changes. And so that's the thing that stands out. It's like, what's next? Um, you know, things happened last week in Buffalo, uh, this one yesterday and, and, you know, the first thing you think of as, as a parent, but also what's going to happen, what's going to change. And, and that's the, the kind of underlying theme of what's going to happen, what's going to change. And as of now, not, not much changes due to these incidents. And then you start to look back at Sandy Hook, Columbine, all the, all the, you know, incidents throughout my lifetime growing up. And there has not been a ton of change you know, with the rules and regulations and gun laws. So um, tough situation overall. And, me being in that community in San Antonio uh, kind of hit, hit home to me. Coach, this is uh, just more on a uh, basketball related note. Uh, Derek White uh, and just the way that he was able to really put his imprint on last game. What's the key to finding ways for him to be impactful, whether it's starting, coming off the bench uh, in a meaningful way for you guys? Just being aggressive, um, taking, taking what's there for him, but also understanding what he does for our team. Uh, there's so many plays that go unnoticed, uh, not on the box score or on the highlight uh, reel that he does. And he kind of gets everything kick-started with his pace and, you know, ball movement. And so those things stand out to us. Uh, we put him in positions that make the right read or score at times. Um, and then just being confident off the ball when they load up like they are going to do on everybody, um, knocking those shots down, taking what's given to them. And so um, it was noticeable, you know, with Marcus being out, him, him in there and pushing the tempo getting to the basket and then making the right play. And, and as always, no matter who's penetrating against this team, they're going to have four or five guys in the paint. And, uh, more often than not, he makes the right play. Thank you.